All right, what's up, YouTube? So it's drizzling right now, but before it starts raining hard, I just want to show y'all a few of my uh, watermelon and muskmelon varieties that I have growing at the moment. Uh, I started them uh, around the time of my uh, last frost, and it's still kind of cool right now, but uh, temperatures are heating up. So about about uh, by next week, I'm looking forward to planting these guys. So without further ado, um, oh, and also I have them started, uh, well, I started the seeds in, in napkins with napkins. And then I, uh, so I sprouted the seeds with napkins. And then I um, I waited, I literally waited until the uh, the seeds started sprouting and the, um, and the actual leaves, the actual embryo leaves, embryonic leaves started showing. And uh, once those came out of the seed, that's when I actually transplanted it and I planted it above the soil line. So that's how that looks right here with uh, a lot of these. You can see some of the leaves are still closed, but they'll open up by tomorrow. Um, some of the fresher ones. So some of the plants may look white and that's what you'll, that's what you'll uh, be seeing is that uh, they, they haven't had a chance to uh, photosynthesize and create the uh, chlorophyll in their leaves. But here's a, a lemon drop that I, uh, I saved seed from a lemon drop last season and I replanted it. And you can see it's just absolutely vigorous. Now I put that many sprouts in these pots. I, uh, I did that purposely. I just wanna see how they grow, how well they grow uh, planted close to each other like this, since it is a dwarf variety. Um, here is lemon drop that I bought, uh, uh, purchased from uh, Baker Creek this season. Um, when it finally became available, I got lucky and got me some seeds. So the, the germination wasn't that great. Um, I, I did transplant these in, into here and the, uh, some of the seedlings didn't do too well. I have I actually have some more seedlings out on the way. Um, there's there's uh, sprouting in napkins right now, or are sprouted in napkins, and I'm just waiting for those embryonic leaves to start showing. But you can see I have that labeled lemon drop, and then this one is labeled lemon drop saved seed. So those are two different sets, and I just want to see how it grows. This is a uh, crimson sweet, and you can see it still has kind of a white stem down there. But this is crimson sweet. Uh, these three all the way back are all crimson sweet. Right here I have Otome. So this is another miniature watermelon. Um, and all three of these are Otome. Now these, uh, so I was still exper experimenting with the napkin method. Um, so when I first, what I was first doing was I sprouted the seeds and I waited till I saw the root and then I put it into the pots. And that's what I was first doing. And uh, so about a week later, I started transplanting them when they start showing their embryonic leaves. And you can just look at that difference. I mean, this back here was, was uh, these seedlings were transplanted uh, before these, oops. They, so these back here sprouted before the ones in the front. Now the ones in the front are only doing so well because I put those above the soil line. Now the ones that only had a root showing and I didn't wait for the embryonic leaves to start, start showing, I put those into the uh, container and you can see this one finally sprouted after some time. And if I look into here, I can uh, see some green. So there's another one sprouting right here. So they are sprouting, but they're sprouting late. So what I do now, I just literally wait for those embryonic leaves. Now right here, here's some uh, crimson sweets that I did yesterday. And you can see they're starting to photosynthesize. They just started shedding there. You can see this one has its uh, embryonic leaves. They just started uh, shedding their seeds. Um, so it's a good success rate. Um, I don't wanna get lost. So let's go back to the front. Um, so we stopped at Otome. Right here is Kaho. Doing excellent, another miniature variety. So I, I planted a few of them close to each other. Uh, others I have them planted as singles just to compare and contrast uh, how they grow. Right here is a uh, Kajari behind it. Behind Kaho is Kajari. And these I planted, uh, these were one of the first sets where I planted, where I waited for the root to sprout. So these are taking a while to um, come above that soil line. So everything where you see they're, they're uh, all above the soil lines is because I planted them like that. 
and these were literally later than the ones that were planted below the soil line so that's just something to keep in mind um will it uh will it decrease my days to maturity um will i be able to ripen up a melon quicker doing doing it like this we'll see uh so right here is a new variety or well, not a new variety but an old original variety that's that's come back into the commercial market and this one is called ravenscroft i got this one from so true seeds um i'm hoping it's the real ravenscroft uh, i wouldn't know because i i don't um have too much information on the melon i just know ravenscroft and, and bradford were some uh highly popular melons back in the day so this is ravenscroft um and you can see how uh, some of these ravenscroft i just uh i saw when the embryonic leaves were just beginning to uh sprout out and i just uh planted the seed itself you can see the seed itself is planted above the soil line. All I did was just put the roots under the soil and I just put the seed cap. Cause I, the way I was thinking about it is I let the plants get an inch tall. So if I plant them an inch below the soil line, and if I were, if I normally would direct sow them an inch below the soil line, I can just literally plant the root itself. If I pre-sprout it and grow it about an inch or an inch, inch and a half high, I can, uh, or inch and an inch and a half long, I can, um, put that the uh, inch under the ground and I have a half an inch above the soil line which would be the seed cap and you can see here some of them were in different stages of uh of sprouting and I just took them all and put them in as long as they were shedding that uh seed cap so I still have some Ravenscroft that's on napkins but you can see there uh these are all doing very well and I, I, I transplanted these yesterday and these were transplanted about two or three uh days ago uh no more than four days ago raven's crop seems to be very vigorous if i'm gonna be honest um so here's kaketi this is a, a watermelon variety that i introduced um last season so kaketi is uh i introduced it as gsmo 2-30 um that's how i received it from the usda um so here's one that i, I did yesterday they, uh, they perk up after a couple of days, so don't think they're uh, doing bad. Now, I had got out here a little bit late. I'm into water, and this got a little bit dried out, so that's what happened right there. This one was on its way to looking like that, too, but I caught it in time and started watering. And you can see it, it literally just shedded its seed, and uh, it's going to perk up, and it's going to look like these, basically. So all these were all done the same way. You can see the... Uh, these are very, very, very recent. So they still hadn't had a chance to photosynthesize and create that chlorophyll in all of their leaves. Um, that's our little tome. And all of so those are tome were done early and I just been doing them as they've been sprout, sprouting. Uh, let's see what we're missing. This is Benny Kodima. Now, comment below if you had luck with uh growing benny kodima i haven't had it luck uh last season when i tried to grow it 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 didn't produce what i was expecting it to produce so i assume some of the seeds were bad that baker creek was offering but judging by the reviews uh some of the seeds also had to be good because uh people on the on the reviews a couple of people posted some ripe uh ripe benny kodimas so some people had good seeds, but others like me had uh, seeds that were showing white melons that didn't ripen to red. So I'm trying it again this season. I'm just hoping for the best with Benny Kodima. And this is Lila Nau Sweet Glow. Now these, I, uh, these were planted below the soil line and they just started sprouting. Now I actually thought when I first started planting everything uh, below the soil line uh, with just the root sprouted, I actually thought the seeds were uh, dying out after I planted them because it's been, I mean, probably close to up to two weeks, um, near two weeks now that, that I put them under that soil and they still hadn't sprouted. So I was like, oh man, I just wasted a lot of my seeds. But um, the ones that I planted with that first method uh, with just the root sprouted, they, uh, they're doing okay. But I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. I, I let them those uh, embryonic leaves sprout out and then plant it. And then I have one more variety. Um, 
This is called Red and Sweet, and this one just sprouted uh, today, or it just um came from under the soil line today. I, I thought I lost this variety too. I was like, man, I got this from uh, Carrie Hefner or he Carrie Hefner, and um he he works at uh, LSU, and he was able to to uh, re introduce this old variety that LSU bred in 1957, I believe. So this one is supposed to be very sweet, so I'm looking forward to this one. But I, I did thought I, that I lost those uh, seedlings at one point after I sprouted them, because I planted them about a week and a half ago. But they're doing good now, but I have some more that's on napkins that's sprouting, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plant those with my uh, newer method of just putting them above the soil line. So that's all I wanted to show y'all. That's what I have going on right now. I have a couple of red and sweets in this bed. Uh, this bed just seems to perform so well with watermelons. I have a couple in this bed, a couple of red and sweets. I put a couple of over there. And if you remember last season, this is where I grew the Kajari's at. And the vines were just sprawling in this little area. I'm gonna um, clear all this out once the vines start sprawling. I planted a, a couple over here, red and sweets. And then I have a couple of red and sweets in my blueberry bed. I'm gonna clean this up. Many, many seedlings. Those seedlings, uh, those melon seedlings and watermelon seedlings are going uh, into my other garden and my larger garden where I have the weed mat set up and I have uh, 300 foot rows. Some of them are six foot by 300 foot and others, uh, other rows are 12 foot by 300 foot. So I have, um, I have three red and sweet seedlings right here that I'm still waiting on to sprout. Funnily enough, though, I could plant these much sooner, but I could also germinate seeds after these. And if I plant them above that soil line, they seem to uh, grow much faster. So that's my update, y'all. Next, I'm gonna have some um, blueberries ripening up. You can see we have some full branches of uh, flower clusters. Yeah, I have sunshine blue. So it's already started setting fruit. This one is self fruitful, so it doesn't need uh, any pollinators. This one has been self pollinating, and um, they're setting fruit quite well, honestly. See here goes some that just set fruit. Four bushes. I'm loving it. Uh, this is about a four-year-old plant. I've been meaning to fertilize it. I, I believe if I do fertilize it, these whole branches will be just full of flower clusters. But there's still there's still a lot of fruits on here. I can't complain. But definitely, if I fertilize it, all of these branches will just be full of flower clusters. See y'all in the next one.